Today, I'm going to teach you how to install Stable Diffusion so that you can create amazing images like these. However, if you've come to this tutorial, I'm going to assume that you're a beginner and there's a few things that we need to clear up first. If you've come here assuming that Stable Diffusion is a piece of software that you can install on your computer to generate these images, you're half right. Stable Diffusion is actually a series of AI models that you can install on your computer along with a piece of software to generate AI images. However, after today's tutorial, you'll be able to use this software to not only run Stable Diffusion, but also other AI models like Flux, Lumina, Sana, and many, many more. In fact, Stable Diffusion was one of the first AI image generation models to come out, and it comes in various flavors. There is the original Stable Diffusion 1.5, Stable Diffusion XL, Stable Diffusion 3 and 3.5, each of which have different strengths, weaknesses, and run on different levels of hardware. If you have an entry-level GPU running at 4, 6, or 8 gigabytes of RAM, you're better off sticking to Stable Diffusion 1.5. If you're lucky enough to have a beefier computer that's running at 12 or even 16 gigabytes of RAM, you can get away with Stable Diffusion XL or SDXL as it's commonly known. And if you're running with 16 gigs, 24 gigs, or are lucky enough to have one of the new RTX 5090s, then you can comfortably run more powerful models like Flux. Regardless of what you choose, they'll all run on Forge, the software or user interface that we're going to look at how to install today. Now that that's out of the way, let's get into installing Forge. All you need to do is go to the URL that I've put in the description down below, and that will take you to this GitHub page. You can go ahead and ignore all of this and scroll down until you see this installing Forge section. Now, if you're a Windows user, it doesn't get any easier than this. Go ahead and click on this link over here and that will download a installer for you. The installer is this seven zip file that you see over here. So it will look something like web UI Forge CU121 Torch231.7z. Now, before we continue, I do need to mention that this is designed to run on an Nvidia graphics card. If you have an AMD graphics card, this will not work and I will have another tutorial for you coming up soon. However, assuming you're running on an NVIDIA card, go ahead and unzip it here. Once you've unzipped it, you'll have a similarly named folder sitting next to it. Go ahead and open that and you'll see a handful of files. The first thing that you want to do is run this update.bat. Even though we've technically downloaded the latest version, sometimes the developers can push up a version and not include it in the installer. So this allows you to just grab those latest files. Go ahead and click update.bat. That will open up a terminal window and it will download the necessary files. Once that's done, go ahead and run.bat. That will open up a terminal once again and a browser window with Forge open and ready for you to use. If you're a Mac or Linux user, I'll have another video for you guys coming soon as that requires a few different steps. Once you've gone ahead and click run.bat, you'll get presented with a UI like this. Congratulations, you now have Forge installed. However, we can't use it just yet, as if you come over here to Checkpoint, this is where it shows you all of the models that you have installed. And at the moment, we don't have any installed. But worry not, it's relatively easy to find models for us to install and use. The important thing is to download the models and put them in the right place. To do that, go back to your Forge installation folder and head down here to Web UI. Then if we scroll down, you'll find a models folder over here. Go ahead and open that and then you'll see a whole bunch of other folders. This is where we're going to install the models that we're going to use. Typically, you're going to install them to models, stable diffusion, depending on what each model requires. If you're looking for models, there's two places that you can find them. The easiest place is to go to Hugging Face, which is a repository of all kinds of models, or you can go to Civit AI, which has an incredible variety of image generation models. Now, one of the really cool things about open source image generation models is that because they're available to the public, you can actually go in and customize and fine tune these models to specific styles, appearances, traits. And this is what is documented here at Civit AI. There's a wealth of user generated customizations for stable diffusion, flux, and so on that do all kinds of things, whether it's improving the quality of your AI generated skin, all kinds of anime and art style models, models that focus on specific genres, topics, and so on and so forth. You could spend hours and hours exploring Civit AI for all kinds of models, but we're just gonna grab a couple now to get started. To find a model that we wanna use, we can just go over here to models, pick what kind of focus we wanna have. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the Dark Sushi Mix. It's an anime model that I like to use before and is based on Stable Diffusion. If this is the model you wanna use, go ahead and click download here. You can also right click the download and save linked content as, you'll get a pop-up for your 
for your Explorer, you can go ahead and pick the folder. And as I said before, you wanna download it straight to your models folder. So we're gonna go here to web UI models, stable diffusion, and click save. And the model will download there. Now, once you've downloaded the model to your folder, it will appear up here in Forge under Checkpoint. If you don't see anything here, go ahead and click the Refresh button. Then it should appear. And then you're pretty much ready to start using Stable Diffusion, Flux, or whatever it is that you've downloaded. You can go ahead and put in your prompt over here. And in the case of Stable Diffusion and a few other AI image generation models, you have to put in something called a negative prompt. If you're coming from mid-journey, this could be new to you. And what you basically put into the negative prompt are things that you don't want in the image. Not all models have this. If you're using Flux, for example, it ignores the negative prompt. So this is really something that is very specific to Stable Diffusion. And in this particular example, you can see here that we've put things like cartoon, 3D paint, painting, drawn, frame, border, grainy, sketch, signature and so on and so forth and what i found is very often with stable diffusion the negative prompt is just as important as the positive prompt now if you're relatively new to this and you're not sure where to start there's a couple of places where you can get inspiration for from prompts the first is coming back here to civet ai civet ai also has a huge library of images with a bunch of prompts and negative prompts here however i found that not only can the library be very vast as it's all user uploaded, but many times the prompt and negative prompt don't necessarily match up to the image. So if you're trying to get something particular or you want a particular style and you try out some of the prompts or some of the images just don't have a prompt, you can waste a lot of time going around in circles. If you are looking for something a little bit more curated, I would recommend checking out promcrafters.co who are the sponsors of today's video. Prompt Crafters is a curated prompt database, has a whole range of images along with their designated prompt. Every single prompt has been tested and the results are posted up here on the database. And as an added bonus, they have gone in and separated what are important descriptors, enhancers, art styles, artists, and so on, so that you're able to come in here, pick a subcategory, and actually look at a particular art style or artist and see a whole bunch of images that use that particular keyword in that prompt. This is really helpful when you're learning how to prompt or trying to figure out a prompt that you like, as you're able to see how different keywords and phrases affect images or just draw inspiration for a particular style or objective that you're trying to achieve with your AI generated images. What I really like is not only do they have art styles up here, but everything is separated into categories, subcategories, artists, and they've even got a template section where you can look up a bunch of prompts and just fill in keywords with whatever it is that you want to get a desired result. So we can see here a detailed engraving of a subject descriptor in a location color. So you can go in and just fill that in with the information that you want and get an immediate result. I think they're adding images for this this week. So if you don't see it here, it will be by the time that you sign up to it. I love using prompt crafters. I find it incredibly helpful. It's a great place for you to find a prompt in a style that you like and then kind of iterate and edit it from there. It makes my life when putting prompts together incredibly quick and easy. And I'm always looking here for inspiration, especially since they've got such a broad range of styles and images, everything from product photography to architecture to art and design, marketing, and so on. Coming back to Forge, we've got a few important settings here that we need to look at before we finish up. The parameters that you're gonna be editing are in here in this generation tab. The sampling method is the approach by which Forge takes elements from the model and turns it into an image. That is a very simplified description. Typically what I find works really well is sticking to the DPM Euler, which is down here, Euler A and Euler A sampling methods. However, feel free to experiment and see what kind of results you get. Then the schedule type is, again, simplifying the explanation. When images are created, they happen at a certain rate based on a curve. If you're familiar with what exponential is, this is the best way to explain it. You can see here exponential where the bulk of the image generation happens at the end of the process. All of these are different approaches to how much generation happens at each step. Speaking of steps, over here are sampling steps. Typically for stable diffusion, you want to sit between 20 and 30. However, this can go higher up for other models. High res fix and refiner will come back to in just a moment. Width and height are the 
like width and height of the images that you want to set. And again, different models have different widths and heights that they work well with. With newer models like Flux and Stable Diffusion 3 able to go higher than 1024 by 1024. If you're using SDXL, you're going to want to hang out in the 512 to 1024 space. And if you're using a Stable Diffusion 1.5 model, you're probably not want to go bigger you're probably not going to want to go bigger than 512 by 512 again. And again, you can adjust those based on the aspect ratio that you want. CFG scale over here is how much creativity you want to give the model. The lower the number, the more aggressively the model is going to try and follow the prompt. That has both positives and negatives, as if there are things that are not explicitly described in the prompt and the model has to infer them to come up with the result, it's not going to if you make that CFG scale too low. So again, this is gonna be a number that you'll need to experiment with to get the desired result. Over here, batch count and batch size is basically about how many images the model is going to generate every time you click the generate button. And finally, seed over here. This one's very important because this allows you to consistently replicate the same image. So if it's set at minus one, that means it's random, but I can put in a number here. And when I click generate, and if I don't change anything else, it will repeat the same image again and again. This is incredibly useful. If you find an image that you like, you can go ahead and grab the seed. If you're using random and you want to find out what the seed of that particular image is, you can click this button over here and that will grab the seed from the image. And you can go ahead and make minor tweaks and adjustments to these various parameters and you'll get almost the same image or a very similar image with minor adjustments because it's all based on the seed. So if we leave this seed the same and I bring my CFG down to eight, you'll see that the image is different, but only slightly. So this is a really great way to experiment and figure out what all of these parameters do. Finally, high res fix and refiner. Refiner is usually used with SDXL and what it does is it takes the image through another model whose job it is to go in and fix fine details and generally bring more crispness to the image. And high res fix allows you to upscale the image, which means you can make it bigger than what it is, while retaining most of the style elements and details that you've already got in your image. If you want to know more about these parameters, I suggest you check out this case sampler video where I talk about these same parameters in another user interface called Comfy UI. Don't get too intimidated by it. All of the parameters are exactly the same, so you can just learn about them there. And if you're interested in learning about these other parameters and features down here, please go ahead and like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out as I will be putting out more beginner friendly videos, diving deep into Forge and all of these other settings and parameters. Now, before I finish up, there is one more thing that I do want to bring up, which you may sometimes need. You'll see here a VE slash text encoder section. Some models require something called a VE, which you can place in your models VE folder. If a model needs a VE and you're trying to use it, it will give you an error that a VE is missing. So go ahead, download it, put it in that folder, refresh it, and it should appear here. Regardless, I will put in the description down below the most commonly used VE for flux and stable diffusion. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please do consider supporting me on Patreon as your support there does help make these videos possible. I have a whole bunch of additional goodies on there for users, mostly comfy UI workflows, but I will be putting out a bunch of one-click installers and other cool goodies for my patrons. Finally, please do come by our Discord and join our community. We love seeing the stuff that you guys create. And if you have any questions, somebody's usually around to be able to help you answer them. Thanks so much, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.